In Atlanta, bystanders halt the arson of a historical landmark. In Alabama, an inmate's body has been returned to his family, minus a body part. And a Florida woman is in some hot water after her Christmas gift theft claim becomes unfounded. These stories and more coming at you today, Thursday, December 14th on Real Life Real Crime Daily. And I'm Jim Chapman. And I'm Woody Everson. And I'm Mike Agavino. Thirsty. Thirsty. Thursday. Thursday. And almost Christmas time. And I want to thank our Thirsty Thursday buddies at Drizzly. Yes. Because they have saved my ass a couple of times in the past Jeez. week. This weekend in Palm Beach, Florida, they saved my ass. There you go. Yeah. What'd you have to deliver? I didn't have a gift for a wedding because I didn't think anybody would be bringing a gift since he's marrying a 20-something year old and he's 60-something. I <laughs> figured he already got his damn gift. No problem with Viagra. So I had to get him a nice bottle of scotch. And with that, let's get down to some true crime time for Thursday. Let him. Yeah, and we're gonna go. We're gonna go to Atlanta by way of a Florida woman, and she was arrested in Atlanta after she poured gasoline on the birth home of Martin Luther King Jr. and tried to burn down the historical landmark until she was stopped by bystanders. Thank God. Officers with the Atlanta Police Department responded at five forty-five p.m. on Thursday of last week to report a vandalism. Uh, at 501 Auburn Avenue, which is the site of King's birth uh, in January 1929. Plaque or something up there says that, right? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. I'm, yeah. It's it's a big tourist right, right. Uh, uh, spot. An incident uh, report uh, basically said that Lanisha Henderson had poured gasoline on King's birth home, which is now a museum operated by the National Park Service. Yeah. Until she was interrupted by two tourists visiting from Utah. When police arrived at the historic district, they found Henderson had been detained by two off duty New York uh, Police Department officers who were visiting Atlanta. How about New, that? New York or Utah? New York. Huh. New York. So two off duty New York officers happened to be visiting this historic home. Right. right. And yeah, see this said, going down, and they detain her. Yeah, I thought you said a minute ago that it was two Utah people that detained her. No, the, the, uh, well, there's more. Okay, there's more right, tourists right, than right. just them. Do tell. So, <laughs> so Henderson, uh, Brandon, Florida, was arrested and charged with criminal attempt arson, a second degree felony, and criminal attempt interference with government property. Henderson was booked early Friday, uh, last Friday, according to records. An Atlanta police spokesman on Friday declined to give more details, citing an ongoing investigation, but did tell reporters on Thursday night that the Good Samaritan's actions prevented the disaster. Uh, Atlanta Fire Department Battalion Chief Jerry uh, DeBerry echoed the sentiment to reporters saying that the historical landmark honoring the civil rights pioneer would have been decimated with that amount of gasoline. If the witness hadn't been here and interrupted what she was doing, it could have been a matter of seconds before the house was completely engulfed in flames. Uh, the two-story Queen Anne-style house was the home of King's birth and initially built for a white family in 1895. The home was later purchased in 1909 by the Reverend Adam Williams, who was pastor at Ebenezer Baptist Church, of course, very famous right. for the being the church of Martin Luther King Jr., uh, moved into the house with his wife, Jeannie Celeste, and their six-year-old daughter, the only child of three to survive infancy. Mm-hmm. Alberta Williams married a minister at Ebenezer Baptist Church named Mark, Michael Luther King on November of 1926, and the couple moved in with her parents in the house. The King had Kings had three children born at the home, the first being Michael Jr., who t- later took on the name Martin Luther King Jr., after his father changed his own name to honor the Reformation leader, Martin Luther. After the Reverend Williams and his wife died of heart attacks, the King family moved to a new home when King was 12, and the house remained in the family and later became a rental property. After King was assassinated in Memphis on April 4th of 1968, plans began to make 
the Auburn Avenue House a museum honoring his life. The National Park Service did acquire the museum in 2018. Now, King's birth home closed in recent days and is undergoing renovations that are expected to last at least a year. But you can see a video where it shows Henderson wearing all black, wielding a large red canister of gasoline. A man is heard on the video interrupting her as she's dousing the windows on the front porch with fuel. What are you doing, he said, according to the video. After the woman appeared to wave him off, the man said, that's gasoline. The edited video next shows two off-duty NYPD officers detaining Henderson on the ground before Atlanta police arrive. Henderson ignored the questions by bystanders. When they realized what was going on, they started to plead with Miss Henderson to stop, but she was ignoring them. It also seemed as if she was in a rush to pour the gasoline out faster in and around the house. As Henderson got the lighter, she had grabbed from the grass. Bystanders blocked her from returning to the porch, and that's where your your people from Utah right. come in. Okay. Uh, so Henderson was transfer- transferred to the Grady Detention Center in Atlanta for evaluation and will be placed in the Fulton County Jail once she's discharged. Any idea what the motive was? I mean, if she white black was a racist. She was thing? a black a, a black lady. Did she know what she was burning? Oh, she knew. She knew. I got. She I mean, was full well. That was Martin Luther King else. Jr.'s childhood home. Yes. The hell? You can't mistake it. it, it in Atlanta, it it's, it's an very well uh, marked. Right. I mean, this is this is right. a signs, attraction that people go to yeah, right. on the daily. Right. Yeah. Obviously, they were at NYPD. They do there, tours. The Utah's there. And, Absolutely. And else. The and the Park Service takes it over. So you know, and they have signs and everything else. I just wonder what the hell. Boy, she's going to have a rough time in the prison. Look, and, and uh, you know, the importance of these historical buildings yeah. like this, uh, I, you I, can't replace that once you burn it down. I there's didn't no, know. Yeah, you're right. There's I no mean, replacing and, that. And I didn't know that um, that his name switched, that daddy, his dad switched the name to Martin Luther after that uh, – Movement. Not well, see, I, I taught church. you something today. You, tell, you, you learned me. Yeah. You learned me good. The, uh, I actually did not realize that either until yeah, I, that's I dove into until, this. The, uh, I don't get it. I know she's going to have a rough time. Well, I, it sort of makes you wonder, is uh, is King's popularity with the current generation waning? No, I think uh, this was uh, a crazy yeah, I woman. A nut job. Yeah. I, I mean, people, people. And, okay, and it wasn't the Utah people burning the house down, and her saving the house from the Utah people, no, right? No, no. Okay. It was straight up her. And I guess it's a dead giveaway when you're carrying a large red gas can. Yeah, yeah. and you're pouring it all over the house. the house. I mean, this this like, woman was no, on I'm a mission. Sure, this is not normal. Uh, Look, some people in life are just crazy, and what they do makes no sense. That's and, what makes them crazy. And what you said on another show, the beat down the people uh, gave the person the Publix last week. Mm-hmm. Thank God they intervened. And yeah, they and this just, is a, and weren't just shooting a video. That's right, and this is another good example of, of a, a story a we've covered lately. And I noticed that people are actually intervening and and taking action instead of just sitting right. back and why I think people are tired of this right, bullshit. Right. Right. With with right. people just doing stupid stuff and nobody doing nothing to stop it. Everybody needs to do it, right? Right. Uh, so, speaking of stories, you know uh, that we cover, like the public's one we were just talking about, and people taking interaction. Y'all, we told y'all about this Alabama inmate who died in, in, in prison, and you know under suspicious circumstances or whatever. I can't even remember it was last week or the week before, but. Check this out. Now, I could ch- chose any story I wanted. I did this one, first of all, because of our friends at Parish Forensics. I'll tie it in for a second. Um, but so this, obviously, the inmate died in prison, right? And the family, you know, thought it was under suspicious circumstances, and they weren't notified and all that. Go back and listen to it. But the family of an Alabama inmate who died in prison was shocked when his body was delivered to them so severely decomposed that they had no choice but to hold a closed casket funeral, right? And after uh, filling out the necessary paperwork, then spending five days attempting to claim Brandon Donson's body after his November 21st death, um, and this is all in a lawsuit filed by the family, y'all, the family 
got the, the body back, and they saw bruising on the back of his neck and excessive swelling across his head when his body finally arrived, his corpse arrived. Mm. So naturally, they, they start looking for answers. And the uh, one of the family members retained a pathologist to conduct his own autopsy, which is in – in the state of Louisiana, the only place you can get that done is parish forensics uh, with Roy and the two um, Christians, right? Mm-hmm. And so, but anyway, this, evidently you can get it done in Alabama somewhere. So they hire this pathologist to do the autopsy. Well, I told y'all before, the first thing they do is peel open the skull, which would have been done. And, you know, they weigh in everything. Well, then they're going to open. They split you right down the middle and crack open your chest. Well, they didn't have to do that, right? This dude already had an autopsy. But when they opened him up, guess what they found? What? Nothing. His heart was missing. Mm. Right? So the heart was missing from the chest cavity, according to, um, to the pathologist. And the relatives still don't know where Mr. Dotson's heart is or who's in possession of it or precisely or when he died because he was so deep. You know, why in the fuck when it, when it – it, and people die in prison every day. You would think they have a body cooler. Why is it his body rotten? Doesn't make, any, doesn't make any sense. Crazy. Right? So, um, and he was young. Yeah. Like, he, this he, is a young, he was, young. He was 43 years old when he was found dead in a cell on November 21st, right? So, but the Alabama Department of Corrections performed an autopsy on him and removed the heart, thereby concealing the true cause of death. This is in the lawsuit. The, um, by taking this action, the defendants, being the Department of Corrections, et cetera, intentionally or reckless, recklessly destroyed or altered key evidence to deprive his family of the ability to determine how he died through an independent autopsy. His mom and daughter are now seeking the immediate return of Mr. Dotson's heart, so it may be examined by uh, autopsy pathologists and then properly cremated or interred. But so, look, Dotson had certain 19 years of his 99-year sentence for a burglary. Mm. Who in the hell has ever in the history of the world got a 99-year sentence for a burglary where that's not a sex or a rape or something involved? I don't I don't get that. I guess you don't want to be doing burglars in Alabama. But um, although he was not sentenced to life. Uh, yes, he was. <laughs> right. Yeah, right, yeah, right. He was sentenced to death, basically. The um, alleged misconduct of prison staff was tantamount to a death sentence, per the the, the lawsuit. Um, the Dotson's family brought claims of the of violations of the Eighth and the Fourteenth Amendment in the indifference to the man's medical needs and safety, conspiring to cover up deliberate indifference and interference with the family's right of burial, intentional and the. Negligent mishandling of a corpse, intentional inflection of emotional distress, and failure to notify the next kin of the wrongful death. So, in the day, days before his death, Dotson had told prison staff that another inmate was threatening him with violence. Well, normally you get locked, you know, put on protective custody or whatever. Instead, the prison staff moved him from a segregated housing unit where he was safe, even though he was being threatened. In the general population. Mm. All right, figure that one out. Where the, uh, uh, he could be attacked easily by uh, those seeking to harm him and exploit him in the grossly, Mike talks about it all the time, understaffed and severely overcrowded ventures correctional facility. And it goes on and on, y'all. They said correctional staff had every opportunity to intervene and prevent the death of Mr. Dotson, uh, but no member was available to prevent the abuse of Mr. Dotson endured and the constant and unlimited access to drugs that he had. Uh, when he was found dead, the family alleges that his body had already begun to stiffen. That's rigor mortis. But and it just goes on and on. They're, they're suing the prison or suing actually the, Alabama, um, the University of Alabama at Birmingham School of Medicine because they believe that's they were the uh, recipient of his heart. That they would be going to study, you know, they take body parts like that and, and, mm-hmm. and medical students. And you, I just thought that was bizarre as far. They didn't destroy it. They know that the well, heart is they, still- they're, they're, they hadn't got it back yet, but they believe that's where it went. Um, and then it just goes on and on. The But I just thought that was bizarre. It's really bizarre. Uh, like what would, what would a heart indicate that, 
I, couldn't I find know. in other organs. And yeah, well, I mean, it could be anything. That, I mean, they could have smushed his heart. I, I mean, who, we're never going to know. Why, why would you? Why would you not put the heart back in the body? And I told you when they do it, they take these organs out, they put them in a, in a bias bag, and they stuff them back. I in don't the think cabinet. they were trying to hide anything. I think they were stealing. Yeah, I mean the they organs. Saying, yeah, are worth oh, that's a lot worth a lot of money. money. Right? Yeah, that's true. And people, and, people, and it's big demand for, for we'll medical Cut you schools. open and take your yeah. stuff and sell it, it in a heartbeat. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's but true. this is a hospital. But yeah, the right. prison's not, not a hospital. hospital. It, it, it's, oh, I thought it was the University of Alabama it, Hospital that, that did the autopsy. No, 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 no. There's, they believe that when the autopsy was done at the prison, the heart that the up. heart ended up going to the hospital because they evidently needed a hospital. Now, the, the university to to study a heart. Just freaking God, weird, that's right? Uh, fishy, Crazy. Fishy. They probably they figured they, nobody's they, ever going to check they, this. You complain that you're about to get killed or somebody's threatening you and they take you out of admin seg and put you in general population where it can happen. Mm-mm. Bizarre. So. Wow. Well, Tis the season. Yes, it is. And, you know, there's a lot Hunting of happy, happy stories around the holidays and sometimes. Hunting season. Sometimes there's some sad ones. Wabbit season. Wabbit season. I saw um, rabbits last night. On November 19th. Fried rabbits are excellent. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> on. <laughs> what was the movie? I don't know. Where she boils the rabbit. Oh, yeah. Pet yeah, rabbit. Yeah, yeah. No, crazy. Uh, um, fatal attraction. Uh, fatal attraction. Yeah. Hey, y'all. Let me tell you about Gobble. All Gobble Meal Kits are pre-prepped. That means less work for you and less waste in your kitchen. Their meal kits include everything you need so you can save time at the store or just skip that trip entirely. I got the box in and I had three different meals. I had a Kung Pao chicken, crispy fish tacos, and a beef boom jignon. However you say it, but let me tell you about the classic beef Boo Jignon. Look, it came with beef pot roast and a beef broth concentrate, red wine demi glaze, cremini mushrooms, siapelloni onions, mashed potatoes, baby carrots, and rosemary thyme butter. It was so easy to make. Literally like 15 minutes it took Cindy. And let me tell you something. And all the dishes were fire. But this thing was like a taste explosion in my mouth. It's just un real we've got to spend more time together and more time doing the things we love because everything came in this one single box right to my door so see what a difference gobble will make for your household right now they're all for my listeners a fantastic limited time deal you get a hundred and twenty dollars off across four boxes plus free shipping and free cookies. And let me tell you, those cookies, I ate one that was sin-baked, and it was delicious. Go to gobble.com slash real life. That's G-O-B-B-L-E dot com forward slash real life for $120 off your first four boxes. This offer is not available on the home site, so don't miss out. This is genius. It's taste explosions in your mouth like you never had. Hey ladies, are you feeling overwhelmed by hormonal changes? Well, you're definitely not alone. There are more than 1,000 hormone disruptors living in our environment right now. It's in your food, your water, the air you breathe, the clothes you wear, your skincare products. They all mess with your hormones. Then there's the natural hormone changes your body goes through. Premenopause, menopause, and while it's a natural process, it doesn't mean you have to suffer through it. The good news is... You don't have to suffer through it anymore because now you have Hormone Harmony, a formula made only with herbal ingredients that are shown to reduce hormonal symptoms in women of all ages. Hormone Harmony is not just a hormone support and supplement. It's become a phenomenon. Women can't stop talking about it on social media. A bottle of Hormone Harmony is sold every 24 seconds. And the biggest benefit? Well, my wife says... It makes her feel like her own self again. And that's what women mention over and over in the reviews. And there are over 30,000 reviews for Hormone Harmony. And for a limited time, you can get 15% off your entire first order at happymammoth.com. Just use code RLRC at checkout. 
That's happymammoth.com and use code RLRC for 15% off today. That's H-A-P-P-Y-M-A-M-M-O-T-H.com and use code RLRC. On on November 19th, Shayna Hudson, age 39, of Lehigh Acres, Florida, reported a break-in at her home. The thief, or thieves, had stolen numerous items, including all of the Christmas presents she had purchased for her children. Happens every year. Hudson begged and pleaded on camera for the robbers to return the family's gifts. In fact, she did that with ABC TV in Fort Myers. And here's just a short clip to show you how emotional Shanna Hudson was at that moment. I wanted my kids to have a decent Christmas, but now they don't have a Christmas at all because some thief came and stole our That evening, begged and pleading to whoever stole her kids' gifts to bring them back. Turn yourself in and bring us back our stuff so me and my kids could have a good Christmas. You can see she's devastated and wants the thieves to please return the gifts. That's not going to happen. Well, it's not, and there's some reasons for that. Lee County detectives investigating the case were so upset that they took it upon themselves to coordinate a donation from the Lehigh Acres American Legion, as well as funds from the sheriff's office to surprise the family with new Christmas presents. But just as detectives were preparing their make good Christmas for the Hudson family, a disturbing tip came through Crime Stoppers. That tip led detectives to the residence of another family member. Here's a clip with Ms. Hudson again after the detectives visited that other family member's home. Deputies say Hudson had them the entire time. An anonymous tipster leading deputies to a relative's home Monday evening and then to Hudson's house where they arrested her. While being escorted to jail, Hudson not as talkative as before. What do you have to say to the people that were out there, crime stoppers that were looking for your gifts? Are your kids going to have a good Christmas now? That's right. Detectives found nearly all of the items reported stolen by Shanna at the other family member's home. TVs were carefully concealed under bed sheets. Fishing poles were strategically placed among piles of clothes. And a basket was filled with Bath and Body Works products. Lee County deputies meticulously compared the recovered items with the list of reported stolen goods, marking off nearly every single one. As a result of the investigation, Hudson is facing charges of making a false police report. The incident serves as a cautionary tale about the consequences of filling out false reports which Woody's talked about before. This pathetic uh, behavior is unacceptable, especially given the circumstances this holiday season, Sheriff Carmine Marcino said in a statement. What do you think about this lady, boys? The, you know, it goes back to like people saying they have cancer or whatever and, and getting the donations and the public sympathy. And here you got these police officers stepping up going to give these kids a good Christmas. You know what? It sounds like they're really going to have a good one. They got TVs and fishing poles and bath and body works or whatever, but she's doing this. She yeah, she needs her lowest of the low right, right there. And she was going to get away oh, with she it. She was going it, yeah. it must have been a relative or very right. close, someone yeah, very they, close they to like, her mm, who uh, spilled, uh, spilled, uh, spilled the beans on this thing. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. And you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not even necessary for, you know, for example, here in, in our neck of the woods of Livingston Parish, they have Jason R's Christmas Crusade. Yeah, and it where was the, Willie's before it was his. Yeah. And I used to go out and deliver yeah. the toys and, That's and right. collect the toys and everything else. And you just put your name on a list, and, and uh, as long as they can verify, verify that you it. are in need, your yeah. kids are going to yeah. have a good Christmas. Absolutely. And I'm sure they have those in many yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and there's nothing better than making – we did it with our kids for years through uh, through the church is – you choose a family to right. bring Christmas to right. and you surprise that family and right. you're bringing gifts to these little kids that have not right. mean it's. And it's just, it's crazy. But let me tell you something else real quick. It's important. Everybody listens to this every single year as a cop and then a detective, people have legit because the kids get out of school and shit and all your Christmas presents under the tree. But before Christmas, somebody's inevitably or break into your shit and steal all your presents. Mm. And the so make sure you lock your shit up. Now everybody has cameras. Hopefully you have cameras and all that. That's right. And and another uh, tip out there that just popped in my head, but very important when you 
you know, for Christmas, when you get those boxes, don't put them out oh, there yeah, to be thrown yeah. away. Because Break them down, them. hide them. Because, yeah. you know, the last thing you want is your new 90 inch TV right. box to be out in front be for like, the trash oh, well, to pick I up. And I'm still in. Yeah. 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 You got Mr. Oh, Theft riding right. down the road yeah. saying, oh, that's going to look good on my right. mantle this evening. Right. And, you know, a lot keeps an honest man honest. Y'all just try not to tempt them anymore than necessary. Yeah. Right? Hide those Turbo Man dolls. That's right. There you go. All right. Uh, look, we talk about scams a lot on this show. And, that's, and, your, uh, that's your department. Major, major issues with, well, of course, scam technology scam. scams yeah. become a big a big thing. And um, one thing that's really big right now, I mean, huge, is QR codes, right? right. And, hey, look, I might have been the world's last person to come I around know. to the QR codes. It was me. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 but I finally had to learn how to do it. Yeah, and now they're putting them on vehicles where you just scan it as they're driving down the road. I mean, a lot of innovative things. They were putting them on T-shirts, which I've, I thought was crazy, but everybody's right. doing it now. And um, so let me tell you, they have these scammers have figured out a way now with QR codes to scam you. And right. for those of you that may not be familiar, QR codes are the square barcodes that begin, can be scammed and read by smartphones and seemingly used everywhere. You use them to board flights now, enter concerts, even to look at restaurant menus. They'll have a QR code there for you to scam. But scammers are trying to steal personal information and are using QR codes to direct people to harmful websites that can harvest their data. Uh, would-be scammers hide dangerous links in the black and white jumble of some right. of those QR you know codes. That means when you look at it, yeah. That's right. So the people behind those schemes direct users to use the QR codes in deceptive ways. Uh, basically, they will they will uh, they will appear j- legitimate. They might be. Uh, on parking meters, they might put a QR code on one and say, scan it, and uh, it looks legitimate, and people scan those things, and it brings them to a website where it actually installs malware on your phone uh, that will take your personal information. Look, if you're one of those people that you have the Apple uh, the Apple app where you basically have a picture of your credit card on right. there. So you don't you just tap your phone like to pay for things. Thing Guess Apple what? Wallet. They put things in these cute stickers that they put on these mm-hmm. parking meters where when you do that, it sends them your credit card information. Wow. Uh, so uh, this is becoming a, obviously a big deal right now. Now the pandemic uh, ever since the pandemic, that kind of led to kind of a surge in it because mm-hmm. people were using QR codes for everything. Mm-hmm. QR codes existed before that, but during the pandemic, it, that's well, what blew them through the roof. Well, if you want to say it like in a hotel now, like the Beau Rivage, if you want to order room service off the TV, you have to use a QR code. Yes, that's mm-hmm. that's right. And, and, uh, and so it's basically opening up just a whole new avenue for these people to hack your phone. So you just need to be careful. Uh, Make sure that you use, you know, there's, there's ways that you can uh, protect yourself. Don't open links. If you're not really a hundred percent sure of what that link is Uh, and don't download documents or follow QR codes from people that are unknown contacts that can get you in a bind. Uh, Make sure you use two-factor authentication when using apps or telephone numbers to verify people online and their identity. uh, Face ID and a code or something? Yeah, well, two-factor is is where you have kind of like a backup way to prove who you are. So you might use your password, and then they send you a text and and you have to do it. It's annoying at times, trust me, but it it will keep you safe. There's a reason they do it because somebody else has gotten away with it, right? That's right. And always after you scan a U, uh, QR code, it'll show you like a link to a website. Mm-hmm. Make sure you check that URL. And if you're going to Hilton.com and the URL says a bunch of gibberish words dot com, right. you know, there's something there wrong. Some Don't go there. Uh, so that's becoming a big issue. People need to be aware of it. QR codes. QR codes. Yeah. And it's just a sign of the times. As history is going on and technology improves, criminals improve their game, right? So it, they it's do. hard to catch a smart one. It and is. Look, it, it only has to work for them like one out of 100 times, and then they're hitting a good leg. Yeah. Right? That's right. Um, this happened to me, and I assume some other people out there, 
did the, the same thing for a while. We used one email address on the personal side, my, my wife and I, and after, after a while, I mean, this is an email address we got years ago, but after a while, things start coming through there that are, uh, you know, this product is being shipped to you mm, or I, this purchase yeah, has been made and you don't know if the other person did it or not. Yes. And a lot of times it's a scam. Same sort of stuff happens if you're sharing an Apple ID. Like I have my kids on my Apple ID mm. when they were younger. I think my whole family is on one. Yeah. Uh, separate. You got to get them I, separate. I don't, I don't know what it is. Uh, my, yeah. My, we're all on the same. Just like I separate know, emails, separate Apple ID. IDs. Cause there's just so many ways for, you to fall into one of those right. uh, traps because you're assuming that one of your kids did this or your wife did this or well, I, I got to tell you one that I got recently that I know was bullshit it was a AARP. <laughs> <laughs> like, come get you some discount, motherfuckers. I'm like, don't you ever send me that? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 probably it wasn't bullshit. They're just sure they're, they're just I'm pre-selling that. you. They're getting ready for you. Yeah, they're they are big time uh, spammers. Uh, while we're talking about technology. Friend of mine had a little toy while I was away in Florida that I saw that I could not believe. The twenty six year old new bride. Yeah, <laughs> well, the, besides that one, it's not the same guy. Um, so an AI that can take when you go place your bets, whether you're going DraftKings or mm-hmm. whatever you're using, it and as long as you have the uh, Sunday, uh, what's it called, Red Zone or mm-hmm. whatever it is, football package. Mm-hmm. It will deliver you the most important news in real time based upon your bets. Really? I so know, that's, so that's you're not they, watching they football games. Yeah. You're watching what's impacting your betting. Right, right, right. This is the last thing gamblers need. Exactly. Because <laughs> like right. feed it's the like beast, Devious right? people yeah, yeah. doing uh, devious things. I wasn't going to bet the real money, but now I am. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so. that one's uh, coming at some point. That was a beta, but um, I was amazed. Okay. You guys are big Tyler Perry fans, right? Just the, I like the Aerosmith. Tyler Perry. <laughs> <They're>, Aerosmith. <laughs> That's that's one of the funniest, that's one of the funniest things you've ever said. <laughs> What's his name? This is a uh, no, it's Ty- 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 Stephen Ty- Tyler. Ty- is oh, Steven Tyler. Tyler. You're thinking uh, of Perry is the the lead singer of uh, Journey. Uh, yes, yes, yes yeah. Uh, yeah. Stephen oh, Perry and Stephen that. Tyler. Yeah, but well, Tyler, Tyler, Tyler Perry is a little Perry different. Is, <laughs> I don't even know who Tyler. One of the actor most successful, really producer. Yeah. Um, actors in the world who basically built the film industry in Atlanta. I mean, he is mega mega. He may be a a billionaire at this point. I'm not sure. Um, All the Medea and, you know, all of those. Medea. Medea, Medea. Whatever it was. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry, sorry. He's a very positive guy. Has a lot of... Now I got to look him up. Anyway, uh, I've got a quote from Tyler I wanted to start this story with because he's very big into forgiveness. And Tyler Perry said, quote, it's not an easy journey to get to a place where you forgive people, but it is such a powerful place because it frees you. And a Tyler Perry quote about forgiveness, no doubt, inspired the Ohio man in our next story. You know, he's born in New Orleans. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Charlie Glenn said he was asked by his girlfriend, 36-year-old Tanya Nestor, to take a walk. As they were walking, he realized that she had a pistol with her. She said it was a pellet gun, and I said, let me see it, because I'm not going anywhere with you if you've got a gun. And she pulled it out and shot me, Glenn told local news station. Glenn was able to wrestle the pistol away from Nestor despite being injured and bleeding badly. Family family members quickly dialed 911. Glenn was rushed back to his house by his friend, Paul Carpenter, where Carpenter said he assessed uh, his friend's injuries. My thoughts were, was he okay? You know, is he dead? Is he, is he, is he going to make it? I didn't know, but they said he was probably going to be okay. It didn't look like it was life-threatening. Carpenter said, meanwhile, a family member said they saw Nestor run from the house and through an alley. Officers were able to catch up with the ex-girlfriend about a half mile from the house. They promptly arrested her. Glenn's injuries weren't life-threatening. They were testicle-threatening. In fact, 
Nestor had shot off one of her former boyfriend's nuts. Oh, my God. It's unfortunate that somebody would do that, Carpenter said. I don't know if they had relationship problems or what, but to do something like that is horrible. Nestor was booked into the Butler County Jail, and she faces charges of felonious assault. Glenn, meanwhile, is back home expressing that he has no hard feelings toward his ex-girlfriend. Quote, I still to this day love her. Tyler Perry would be proud. Wow. What did he shoot her with? What did she shoot him with? A pistol. It doesn't say what kind. I, I, I don't understand it? if it's a, that's a far away shot or you like grab his nuts and squeeze one of them and blow it off. And, and I want to know. You're walking, all, you're walking along with him. Well, I want to I want to know um, if it gets blown off, does it hurt as bad as if you get hit in it because it's not there anymore? Yeah, if you get thumped. We talked about this last week. You get thumped in the nuts, and sometimes it takes two seconds before it sets in. Mm -hmm. You get your nut blown off. That's an issue. Ladies, I'm sorry if you don't understand that. You have a buddy who was a little cross goalie who took one, boom, That's right crazy. there. Uh -uh. You know how women's breasts are sensitive. Like you, they, they don't want to get punched in the breast. She doesn't look. She looks like just a nice lady next door. Not going to yeah. shoot your nuts off or nut yeah. off, but. She did. I don't know. It's bizarre. I mean, if you have to lose one of anything on your body, so you can lose I, any one of your fingers, any one of your toes, I'd lose toe. an ear, you, you pick a toe. Like what a what little, toe would you pick? Little toe. Pinky toe? Little toe. That's probably, that's probably the first thing to go, right? Then I'll come back and slice your throat with my big toe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You definitely give up a pinky toe before you give up a right testicle, right? Right. They still, still what? what? Psych. That's uh, not the one I tried I to do. Say, it's been a I'm minute gonna leave that though. Actually, it's a today in true crime yeah, history. Because yeah. we had we had kind of an interesting December 14th right? throughout the years in true crime the history. One you did last week was really interesting. Now in 1972, and and some of these you may not be familiar with. I kind of like doing those because they're crimes that you may want to go look up and and right. read up on. Uh, in 1972, Laura Lee Cursa, who was 13, is found dead after going missing from a you save store. She had run away before this and was known to hitchhike. Her remains were found in Saint, Santa Rosa, California, ravine, and no one was ever caught or charged mm -hmm. huh? or charged for her her murder. And look, 1972 was was hitchhike time. Right, right, like. Right, right. People hitchhiked a lot, just, especially in that part of the country. Yeah. Uh, uh, t uh, this past Tuesday's original real life real crime, and it was about serial killers from the seventies, and you you just know everybody hitchhiked back then. Yeah, it was safe. Yeah, so that was December fourteenth of seventy two in two thousand seven. Maria Lauterbach disappeared from a Marine Corps base in North Carolina. She was pregnant at the time, and her remains were found in the backyard of Corporal Cesar yep. Lauren. Uh, he was extradited from Mexico and convicted of Lauterbach's murder in two thousand ten. Mm -hmm. And I kind of remember that. Yeah, I do remember case that. vaguely. That was a big deal. Yep. That was that was December fourteenth, two thousand seven, and December fourteenth of twenty twelve. A twenty year old asshole. Then I'm not even going to give the courtesy of saying his name. Shot and killed twenty six people. Twenty of the victims were children oh. between six and seven years old. And the other six were adult staff members. The shooting became known as the Sandy Hook School oh, shooting. Horrible. I'll never forget that day. That was in 2012. Never, just a, a horrible, horrible just, um, incident. Yeah, it, yeah, prayers for all of them. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, and that is today in true crime history for December 14th. Jumping yeah, right into yeah. it with some kinkiness. Right. Oh, yeah, kinky crimes for Thirsty Thursday. Now, y'all, on the last episode, I, I read you, and, and Mike thought I was, evidently thought I was over with the A's, but I wasn't. <laughs> I read you the name of what the FBI, these are official terms of um, – Fetishes? Fetishes that the FBI has come up with in, in each one. And look, due to popular demand, I'm going to read this one. And, and you know, Monday or whatever, we'll get, or Friday, we'll get back to some regular kinky crime stuff. 
So I'm going back to the A's. All right. Now this one, auto on anthro poor mofo. <laughs> poor <laughs> wait, wait, mofo. Listen, this is, this, this is one word. Come on. It's not over with. Mofozophilia. Now you can guess what this one's going to uh, be. Yeah. So this Something is the fetish, animals, but... the masturbation, is the image of oneself in the form of an anthropomorphic, how do you say it, animal. What does that even mean? <laughs> but it's that, the, that, that the, you brought a, them that, that the animal is is like is human like. Okay, well then you know what? That's a real deal. People masturbate to it. Like a what the like, like a like leopard, it. like a leopard woman. Right. Well, the, what were those horses that had a human body and they were but they were horses? Oh, uh, the uh, Greek uh, minotaurs. Yeah, yeah, hey, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The half human, half horse. And the, Freaks. Centaurs. No, yeah, centaurs. Well, that was. They what's shot the difference they between shot bows the and arrows and the centaurs. I forget. They shot bows and arrows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it might have had horns on their head, like a ram too. Yep. Yeah. yeah. They were that might have been the difference. I right, said so we touched on this one last week, and and but it's, this is a different one. This is the one that actually worked a lot. Auto uh, erotic uh, asphyxiation. That's the self induced asphyxiation, sometimes to the point of near unconscious. That's when oh, they yeah. masturbate and choke themselves out. Um, Thank the you, next Fifty one, Shades of Grey. Right. So this <laughs> one, autogeniophilia. All right. So it's a controversial term intended to refer to sexual arousal of a male in response of the image of himself as a female. You do that, Mike. <laughs> you, do that, Mike. <laughs> you think about yourself. Looking, I do have that red dress. You think yeah. about yourself looking pretty. <laughs> Good Lord. That's, right. a, that's hey, a wackadoodle listen, thing. This one. Hey, who comes up with these fucking names? This one, all oh, hemo fetishism. Right? You'll never... You would never guess what this Some do with bleeding. Yeah. How did you know? Uh, hemo. Hemo. Uh, you said hemo. Oh, it says, it said, I thought, oh, I was thinking homo. But it, it says, making oneself bleed or a uh, type of hematologenia. So they make themselves bleed and they masturbate to it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I understand. Well, you've heard of that cutting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's different. Okay. That's self mutilation. That's the release stress. You're not masturbating while you're doing it. These people are making the cells bleed and, and masturbating into their blood. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that fucking crazy? That's not. All right. Auto uh, knee peophilia. You never gonna get this. This the masturbation of the image of oneself in the form of an infant. <laughs> you can't make this up. This is real shit that, that they do. Uh, let me back it up with this one: auto pedophilia, which is taking a step up, uh, maybe a year or so up. The image of oneself, uh, masturbation to the image of oneself in the form of a child. That's where. You know, you hear about people wearing diapers mm. and shit like that and doing it. And then I, I'm going to give you yeah. one more, and I'll leave it alone for today. Auto plush ophelia. Plush. It's the image, the masturbation of the image of oneself in the form of a plush. Now, I don't know what that means. Do you know what it means? What is a plush? No. Yeah. That's like a a plush is like a, from what I understand, that's like a, a, a something kids play with, the plush Dolls Dolls I was thinking about stuff those like that. animals. He was talking about like stuffed people. animals that people Maybe, that yeah. do. Some of them look it up real quick. Yeah, it's, it, evidently it's stuffed animals. Yeah, <laughs> that is fucking crazy. All right, they, y'all. That's how Ted later on, we'll get, we'll get him to just yeah, we'll disperse these out at, over. The Remember, we had that. I don't know who did the story, but it was the guy who was dressed in the diaper yeah. who kept going back to the same pool. What was oh that? yeah, 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 yeah. The, uh, it was the, that was the kinky crown. He kept going back to the same pool and using the uh, <laughs> different rafts and shit. Oh yeah. And then boy, why the people didn't put the rafts like away anyway? Yeah, fetish. No, or like, they look. You wouldn't believe the shit that the FBI actually has terms for. But well, I, I, I do after and it's all hearing some crimes. of those. Spark something uncommon this holiday with just the right gift from Uncommon Goods. The busy holiday season is here, and Uncommon Goods makes it less stressful with incredible hand-picked gifts for everyone on your list, all in one spot. Gifts to spark joy, wonder, delight, and that's exactly what I want it feeling. Hey, y'all, I ordered 
a super cool piece. It's a candle with a sculpture of an LSU Tiger Stadium on top of it. And each officially licensed laser cut wooden replica features up to four layers of detail, creating a bird's eye view of a specific football field, seating section, and more. And every label includes your stadium's name, the team's logo, and school location. And it has a coconut soy vegan wax infused with sandalwood smell that creates tailgates and touchdowns scent profile, reminiscent of game day. It's invigorating like fresh cut grass and nostalgic like smoke from a pre-game grill. And calming like the crisp autumn air of a new semester on campus. Y'all, I love it. I have it at the base of my TV, and I'm ready to watch the Tigers play on Saturday night, right? Uncommon Goods. Look, when you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. And many of their handcrafted products are made in small batches. So shop now before they sell out this holiday season. Uncommon Goods looks for products that are high quality, unique, and often handmade or made in the U.S., They have the most meaningful, out-of-the-ordinary gifts anywhere. They even have gifts you can personalize. From holiday hosts and hostess gifts to the coolest finds for kids, to hits for everyone from the book lovers to diehard sports fans, Uncommon Goods has something for everyone, not the same old selection you can just find anywhere. And with every purchase you make at Uncommon Goods, they give $1 to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They've donated more than $3 million to date. So to get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash R-L-R-C. That's uncommongoods.com slash R-L-R-C for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limit time offer. Uncommon Goods, we're all out of the ordinary. Build up to Black Friday with savings all month long at Lowe's. Get up to 50% off select major appliances. Plus take an additional 10% off when you buy select major appliances. And don't wait to pick up holiday inflatables under $20. Don't wait to save. In store or online now. Because Lowe's knows deals. Valid 11.6 through 12.4. Cannot be combined with additional discounts. See Lowe's.com for details and qualifying items while supplies last. How about some banjos, Jim? There you oh, go. Okay. Well, mix. Hey. I didn't know I can mix them together. That was, uh, yes. That was a kinky banjo. Oh, great DJ yeah. work there. Well, we had some fun with the Grinch Crimes game last week. Yeah. And so I thought we'd turn it up a notch and give Jim a chance to get revenge on Woody, who was the underdog in the Grinch game that mm. came out winning. What we have today is the 10, the top 10 all-time villains from Christmas specials. So I've got clues that I will read. The only problem I have when you do these, a lot of times you get back to like the 19 fucking 50s and shit, like the black and white Batman. There (laughs) is only one uh, special that... Goes back that far, and everyone that. on planet Earth has seen it. So right. there's not there's not obscure stuff. Do in we have there. to tap okay. in, or are you just gonna so guess? here? So I'm going to. I have several clues for each one, so I'll read a clue and see if either of you want to bang in an answer. If not, I'll read another clue, and uh, and uh, whoever hits first gets a chance to answer. If they don't get it, then I'll read the rest of the clues, and the other person can try. Right? Got it. Okay. Got it. The number 10 ranked Christmas villain of all time. For Christmas movie bad guys, this guy was among the scariest for little kids. Bad Santa with my boy from the Sling Blade. (laughs) Billy Bob Thornton, that is an incorrect answer. (laughs) He was the villain in the original Frosty the Snowman claymation movie. Mm, he sure. wanted for sure nobody knows that he so. wanted the magical hat that brought frosty to life his name was I don't Jim. no one knows that no one knows professor hinkle nobody gets professor hinkle. really okay. hey, come hey, on we've all seen I'm, frosty. I'm okay. 54 okay. i got a lot of useless shit in my brain but that okay. wasn't one of them. second one the number nine villain he is an immortal hermit with vast magic that lives on the mountain of the whispering winds and attacks any who dare come near his territory. His icy heart is melted by Chris Sprinkles. 
The, Gr- the Grinch is an incorrect answer. <laughs> His icy heart is melted by Kris Kringle's kindness and warmth, leading him to become an ally and friend of Father Christmas. His magic beans are what allow the reindeer to fly. In the latter part of the story, he insists on being called Winter. Yeah, I can see sure. it, but I can't remember the name. Okay, I know people in the audience know this one. That would be the Winter Warlock from <clears throat> yeah, I can from see Santa that. Claus is Coming to Town. Okay, so over right. two. I'm pretty old. The number eight <laughs> villain. Billy was given three rules after receiving the adorable Mogwai as a Christmas gift. Don't feed him after midnight. Don't get him wet. And keep him Gremlins. away from bright light. Gremlins. Period. That's an incorrect answer. Damn, I thought you were right on that. Billy, you, you, you might be right about the movie, but that wasn't the answer. Billy breaks all of these rules, resulting in the manifestation of an evil incarnation of Gizmo, who wreaks havoc on the surrounding town on Christmas Eve. After having created an army of gremlins, our villain's antics are hilarious and disturbing to watch at the same time. Our villain's name comes from a unique feature up and down the back of his gremlin coat. Horny tight. I don't know. Stripe. Stripe was the evil gremlin. Uh, you're really it's probably been it. 30 Gosh, years since guys, I watched that okay. show. Come on. All right. Here we go. Some may argue that the real villains in this story were Mr. and Mrs. McAllister as they completely abandoned their youngest. Oh, I got it. Youngest- Home alone. Boom. We're looking, we're calling Calkin. We're looking for the, the villain. villain. The villain the is the uh, the uh, I did, it's Marv and in uh, whatever the fuck the other dude's name is. One the short guy is Marv. It's Marv with crazy hair. We had translate. I look. I had to watch this on VHS uh, when I was a single I, daddy for years. I'm giving Woody a half for that, and I'll finish the clues for Jim to see if he can get a hole. Some may argue that the real villains in the story were Mr. and Mrs. McAllister as they completely abandoned their youngest child, Kevin, before leaving the country. Home alone, Kevin must face off against two dim-witted criminals. The blank blank are repeatedly outsmarted by an eight-year-old. They are burned, shot, tarred and feathered, and all but killed by an adolescent boy and ultimately fail to rob his parents' house. What were these bad guys called will also accept their names. I, I, I know it. Fuck, I don't remember. It was like the bathroom bandits or something because they flooded every house. The wet, band- the, the wet bandits. They were the wet bandits. The wet bandits or Harv and Marv. Harv so, and Marv, yeah. So it's one half to zero. What's that dude's okay. name? He's one of, my, one of my favorite actors. The, Joe the, Pesci. Joe Pesci. Joe Pesci, Joe yeah. Pesci. The wet bandits. Okay. The, wet bandits. the sixth worst villain of all time in holiday specials. All Chris Kringle wanted to do was deliver toys to the children of Sombertown. But when blank blank decided to outlaw the toys, he put a bounty on Father Christmas's head. However, Chris is able to ev- evade the blank blank and goes on to start his life as Santa Claus. Charlie's Angels. <laughs> That's a fucking idea. I don't know either. I think we talked about this guy the other day when we were doing the Grinch. Burger Meister Meister Burger. Okay, I'm pretty sure I've never heard that term in my entire God, life. God, did you guys not watch Christmas specials? Okay, this one, I know I've every confidence you guys will get this one. Many argue this is not a Christmas movie. A Japanese company's holiday party turns Nakatomi Tower into uh, a war zone. Uh, die hard. Die hard. Th- this Bruce Willis, die hard. <laughs> okay. But they for were the, the villain. For, that's, that's a movie, and the that's the heroine. Was, okay. no, was the blonde-headed dude. This uh, German master terrorist, yeah, 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 played yeah, yeah. by Alan Rickman, intends to heist $600 million of bearer bonds, Yippee but didn't Kaye expect Kaye John McClane to be invited to the right. party. yippee ki That was a great movie. Hey, when you get off the airplane, did you take your shoes off and rub your toes in the carpet? <laughs> that's what John McCain did to, to come back from cause McClane. He McClane. Yeah. yeah, whatever his name is. Uh, the, uh, Nagasaki. Nakatomi. Yep, Towers. Yeah, but what's the answer to the I question? close million-dollar deals for breakfast. What's right. the answer to the <laughs> I don't know, but I love the coffee and the donut. Hans. 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 Hans, 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 Hans Gruber. Hans, Hans Gruber. God, what yeah, a disaster. Yeah, a half to zero with four left. The number four 
villain in holiday <laughs> specials. Our next villain comes from 1964's Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. This villain captures Rudolph's friends. The villain's teeth are removed. Nice cave, man. No. Uh, the villain's teeth are removed by Rudolph's friend, Hermie the Elf, who wants to become a dentist. In the movie's saddest moment, Yukon Cornelius the and abominable. the abominable. There you go. Well deserved. The abominable snowman. snowman. Okay. Jim. Well, his name was Jim Abominable. Jim will get one. It's the Abominable Snow Monster. They also called him Bumble. But we'll get right. so Jim is up one to a half. In the end, he turned out to be cool. Yeah, he was cool. He, he put this to the star. Well, that's the probably my favorite tree. character in that. Yeah, yeah, me too. Right. Yukon was pretty cool. Yukon was cool too, yeah. Yukon okay. Cornelius. Fool. The third worst holiday special villain of all time. Even his name has become synonymous with people who are holiday buzzkills. An overnight visit from three ghosts alters his perspective. I know it. His, I'm, I'm, I'm wait this time. Go ahead. I'm going to wait to see what that is. His favorite catchphrase, bah humbug, has become notorious throughout the Scrooge. Ooh, we may have to go to the tape. I think that's a tie. Well, you can give it, give it to Tim. No, it's one and a half to two. Both got the Scrooge. Thought you would have got that sooner. Two left. He was a loner who should have taken better care of his dog. He scowled down on the town of Whoville. Our green antihero suffers from a chronic case of small heart. The Grinch. He totally redeems himself. Totally. So, hey, by the way, that's a beautiful tree. Okay, I last, you get me last one. This is a, uh, the it's last one was a hard one. Jim's awesome. one, so this is just for giggles. Let's see if you guys get this. This villain is not only one of the greatest Christmas villains of all time, but he is actually listed as number six on the American Film Institute's 50 Greatest Villains in American Movie History. He's the main antagonist in the 1946 classic, It's a Wonderful Life. I got a loose Lux- Luxor. <laughs> Is it Luther? Is it, Luther? What was his name? Lex, Lex Luther. Luther. Lex Luther. That's Luther, Superman. Yeah. He's the cantankerous old miser of Bedford Falls who is hell bent to make George Bailey's and everybody else's the Christmas Scrooge. miserable. There's never any redemption for his character living on an infamy uh, as a it was the banker. Christmas scoundrel, Mr. Ms. Potter. That's okay. it. Woody, yeah, you no need idea. to lock yourself up. For <clears throat> a couple of days. Uh, bring on Christmas vacation. And, and then we'll, watch we'll some back. movies. Well, I got into an argument with my son about who was the hottest cartoon character in a Christmas movie. <laughs> mm, I don't know. And we that. decided it was Jessica who, uh, who becomes Mrs. Claus or, later oh, on in oh. uh, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. That was an important uh, that's, that's not, not into even my pile a cartoon, now. dude. That's like a, um, it's like a that's a wooden doll from the 1940s. <laughs> <laughs> she was hot. Though. I'm pretty sure there's a. Hey, I don't think those are real. Though. Look up the FBI fetish for that. Uh, I don't yeah, think that's that's wooden dolls. I don't weird. think those are real. They'll find that for me. <laughs> the fetish for 1964. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get to it one day uh, in a hundred years. From, in a hundred years, when I run out of these fetishes, I apologize, them. folks. I thought these guys were up for this competition. <laughs> yeah, I, I apologize. Very disappointing uh, Christmas season spirit from them. Oh, that's the right. tree that Jim posted the a beautiful tree of the that's Grinch right. tree. Did you see it's it? Beautiful, Mike. Yes, job by my I, wife uh, and not me. Yes. <laughs> that uh, she did a spectacular job. She did. Thank God she has that talent. Right. Yeah. So there you go. All right. Any final thoughts? Uh, let's see. If, today's the fourteenth, and then we we do Friday would be the fifteenth. Then we're at Christmas Eve. It's the following week, or is it? We can nine days it. later. All right. So anyway, uh, <laughs> final thoughts. I'm trying to figure shit out in my head. They said there'd be no math. The love and appreciate each and every one of y'all. Make sure you are subscribed so you get all of this shit automatically download and stick it to the man. Uh, uh, and if you so inclined, leave us a review. Check out our Real Life Horror Crime daily page and everything else. And just love y'all. Mike, go visit our sponsors. Yeah, if you need some sponsors. whiskey, go visit Drizzly. You need Drizzly. to learn a language. Drizzly. See our friends at Rosetta Stone. Great gift for the holiday for that. Hey, you someone who's taking that big this. trip next year. Exactly. You can yeah. combine this if Drizzly was in another country. That actually is a good Christmas gift. 
you yeah, know, uh, right. a subscription to uh, and look they get a, a heck of a discount. Card. Hey, right now, hey Clark, it's the it's the jelly of the muck love. That's the gift that keeps someone giving all year gift. long. You can also for that person that you might not love that much, you could go ahead and purchase a casket for them That's from true. our friends up in Parish, Broussard Parish, and Parish, have it ready Louisiana, for them um, well in advance. <laughs> Parish, Parish there you yeah, go. it might not really you know be yeah. in tune with the Christmas season, the season, but, but it's given that counts. But uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, until next time, I'm Jim Chapman. And I'm Woody Overton. And I'm Mike Agavino. Your host of Real Life, Real Crime Daily. Peace. Aglets. Build up to Black Friday with savings all month long at Lowe's. Get up to 50% off select major appliances. Plus take an additional 10% off when you buy select major appliances. And don't wait to pick up holiday inflatables under $20. Don't wait to save in store or online now. Because Lowe's knows deals. Vowed 11.6 through 12.4 cannot be combined with additional discounts. See Lowe's.com for details and qualifying items while supplies last.